Welcome back to another episode of It's All Been Trekked Before. Yeah, it's still called It's All Been Trekked Before, even though this time we're talking about by any other name. Yeah, it's a Shakespeare reference. We are getting literary. Speaking of literary, the Quarterly Book Club. Yes, they're back. The Lost City of the Monkey God. They're wrapping it up. But you can catch up. If you've been reading along, you can be right there with them. That's the beauty of podcasts. You can get in there whenever you want. Lost City of the Monkey God by Douglas Preston. Check it out and then catch up with the group with the Quarterly Book Club. Also, if you're not so literary... You're the TV type? Clearly you are. You like Star Trek. You're listening to this rewatch podcast. You're watching TV. Jerome's TV Reviews. Get caught up on the latest stuff. Not just not just the old Trek stuff, but the latest stuff. Jerome's TV Reviews. Check that out on the latest stuff. Should you watch? Should you not? You, there's so much to watch. You have to be very judicious, as is Jerome. Check out Jerome's TV Reviews. Also, patreon.com slash IABD. That's the way to support us. That way that quarterly book club can keep going on forever, and you can know what to watch. For a long, long time. And, and check out everything at iabdpresents.com. Right now, by another the name, it's all been checked before, which smells so sweet. Welcome out to another It's All Been Trekked Before. Or you could call it the Star Trek Podcast, because by any other name, it would be the same. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he said it! <laughs> We're here to discuss the episode by any other name. And by we, I mean... This is Steven. And Keith. And you mean Jerome. And that's it. The ladies have left us. Yeah. To our own devices. They just knew they were going to get turned on by Captain Kirk if they watched this episode. They didn't want to be seduced. I understand. Uh, first impressions. I know the first time I saw this episode, this is one of the first episodes I remember seeing, actually. Mm. Really? I remember first seeing it like, this is great. Mm-hmm. And then I thought, I, in my memory as I got older, I was like, mm, it's too jokey, it's too whatever. Mm-hmm. But watching it tonight, it was fun. It's probably not in my top ten, but it's fun. Uh, revisit some things we visited before, obviously. But I thought it also had a couple, couple uh, cool. I thought deeper conversations about the whole aliens and human bodies, or aliens and unfamiliar territory kind of stuff. So pleasantly surprised with a fifty-year-old show. Yeah, uh, I, I think a little whiskey and laughing helped quite a bit <laughs> to get through it. We saw one scene, which I recall having seen before, but not the rest of the episode, which is strange. I don't know why I would have seen it. That's or the one what circumstances. that I recall most vividly is mm-hmm. when I think of this episode, is that the scene where the Kelvins turn the two crew members into to cubes. Or deca- dodecahedron. Dude, whatever deca- they're, 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 I can't remember what they're called, but 20-sided yeah. dice or whatever. Yes. <laughs> were they 20-sided? I was it I could, it, was, it, it was, seemed like they were 20-sided. Uh, it was What's something there? between there, probably 10 or 20. I can't say it right, but yeah. Yeah, I think it was more than 10. Duo decahedron. Mm. Yeah, I I know I've seen this episode because I definitely remember the scene where Spock faked ill. Must not have liked it very much when I saw it before. It was not memorable. It didn't stick with me. That's that was my thing. But I greatly enjoyed back. it tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Fun. way better than I expected yeah. it to be. Dodecahedron. Mm. Dodecahedron. But I remember as a kid when I first watched this and he they crushed the cube. Mm-hmm. It freaking me out for a while. <laughs> like I I think I enjoyed the ha- the funny parts, but it that part stayed with mm-hmm. me from the episode going forward. Mm-hmm. And spe- that's why I especially knew that the woman was killed. <laughs> nice yeah. that, okay, Same so here. That surprised yeah. me that they killed the woman so the security officer. Yeah. I really expected it the other way around, yeah. which I appreciated uh, when it's not predictable, when I don't know what's going to happen. Well, I, I think I'm glad that... you finished the rest of that sentence. Because yeah. at first it was just like, yeah, you killed like the woman. Yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> Uh, not that the, the security guard lasted that much longer. I mean, they didn't kill him, but right. he got turned back into a cube pretty quickly. He did. I don't remember what age I was when I saw it. I mean, mm-hmm. I think what stuck with me... Uh, certainly, Kirk had a great reaction to that. It was it was a good... Um, for, for whatever, you know, for however long that moment lasted. Yeah. He was obviously, oh my God, I can't believe this happened. He was just, you know... For as really, shattering yeah. as he was the rest of the episode, yeah. and I think in a... The, the the roguish, right. charming Shatner. And he had a couple of his, Spock, what are we going to do? Blah, blah, blah. But I thought, I, I'm yeah. with you, Keith. I thought in the two moments where he was expressing grief or remorse, I thought I thought they were actually more true than they've been in some other episodes that we've talked about where it's like, oh, man, he was really concerned about it. And then two minutes later, he didn't yeah. give a crap. You know? Well, there's there's something else attached to that, though. The, the significance of that to me at the time, I don't know if it had anything, had anything to do with the, oh. the crewman's race or whatever yeah. or the other... 
just um, I kept thinking like right away, would he have been as broken up if it had been the man instead? Oh, that's fair. And that's I don't know if I mean whether it's mm-hmm. it's a thing of oh the, this woman I'm attracted to or or women are more defenseless or whatever his reaction was indicated. I reacted was... very paternal towards her. Yeah. Like so. when she yeah. said uh, asked something and he's like that's a very good question, very patronizingly mm-hmm. and touching her shoulder, mm-hmm. and then he touched her shoulder again. Yeah. yeah. And so I didn't get romance, but I did get protectiveness. It wasn't right. the mirror even no. <laughs> or anything. Yeah. Right. Um, I thought I agreed that the grief was well expressed, but I thought that leading up to that, he did not express enough panic and no and no. protestation. Yeah, he did not. That was a third. But my third sentence was I he agree. was almost implausibly calm after being released yes. that first time. Yes. It was like and the, like the woman was like uh, 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 Yelling Thompson was captain. Like immediately after yeah, right. he was like, no, it's fine. It's all good. Oh, it's fine. I got this. Yeah, I was, had that same impression too. Yeah. It, I guess the argument would be, well, these guys have been through all this stuff, but that, it still doesn't make sense. I don't care what you've been through. You can... Paralyzed for that long, that's like, <laughs> yeah. my, that's like my biggest fear in life. Yes, yeah. Is having something like You're that happen and just, oh my God. I did notice when they paralyzed the people on the bridge that uh, Ahura still blinked. Mm-hmm. So... <laughs> well, I thought did... McCoy had the best freezing pose at that beginning. Yeah. It was very much like... You know the freeze is coming up, so I'm going to make a fun pose. <laughs> like in an gotcha. acting class with inexperienced Fing- amateurs. Yeah. It, I didn't it, was, under- it was finger guns for the audience there. Right. <laughs> I didn't understand why if they had the power to freeze them and all the other powers they had with the thing, why they were like when they wanted to take them to the jail, which was kind of weird. Mm-hmm. When they had this jail constructed, even though they're these super creatures, mm-hmm. and they had somebody stand guard. But if they can freeze them, do all the stuff with those buttons, why were they like, go this way, we're ordering you. It's like, just why freeze. don't you just freeze them yeah. or just... Tra- transport them because yeah. they were able to transport from the ship sure. to, to, to the, the planet's surface fairly easily. Oh, and the yeah, freezing sure seemed very that. directional. Like they like pointed <laughs> yes. one way, froze them, and then they turn around and freeze the other. Well, yeah. And when it was the, inconsistent, I, I would say. Well, I, I think it was consistent, but I think it was directional. I think it only went mm. out like maybe a 90 degree triangle from the button. Like, well, we never did figure it. out the source or how they right. work. That was well, one. No, of, I don't know that. Was, well, I guess we had the Schiller thing in engineering. I don't. Or something. It had, but it had to somehow work in their, like, their brain waves had to. Yes. What, one of my notes about that was I, w- I would have liked to explain, have them explain exactly the interface. Right? One button. Yeah. One, one button. button. <laughs> they, they would kind of. They would have to like be. I'm looking at you to do this. Sometimes it's five people. Yeah. Sometimes it's one, and they have to kind of do this to get it. Sometimes it's, it's, it's like but a But if there were people behind them, it wasn't working on it. So that's right, why so I, kind of, I don't know. Um, and they looked like there were some things on the side that they could have adjusted, lights, like maybe. freeze or I turn suppose, into yeah. a, right. a dice, whatever. Uh, one really thought I had also was that somewhere in the galaxy, somebody's garage door just kept opening <laughs> and then closing. <laughs> opening and closing. Way back on Kelvin. It's like, yeah. And they're like, what is going on? I don't even what happened. <laughs> they forgot the ship even left. It's like the, uh, I remember having, or seeing an explanation of how Spider-Man's uh, web shooters would work sometimes, uh-huh. or like the devices, like the, the idea of them somehow just, just in comic or sci-fi logic or whatever, them being so proficient with them, they can make these little adjustment, adjustments oh, quickly sure. and just yeah. do this thing yeah, somehow, yeah. but very similar. Although I think the compact shapes they have, yeah. the dice thing, they oh. had a lot of holes for being super compact. Was, oh, that. Oh, they were very porous, yeah. Yes. They were very porous, which didn't that make sense to me if they were reducing a human to a compact. Oh, so the, like the neural net kind of, yeah, whatever, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I almost had it. Isn't there a later, uh, maybe, I think there's a later episode where they take all the water out. Yeah. And they mm. get them down to crystals, so I don't... The salt vampire, when he sucks all the... Was that what it was? No, that was something. Uh, there's different. another one later where they some other alien yeah. race reduces them to... Or uh, the original Batman movie with Adam West where they take all the water out and they turn to piles of color. That, oh, that, maybe that's what I'm thinking of even. Even though, like, this person's bright purple, this person's orange, this person's... That, that, actually, I think that is what I'm thinking of. <laughs> the UN? Yeah. I love yeah. that movie. That was, speaking of comedies. Yeah. So, so, circling back to what you were saying before about them needing to direct them toward a jail, yeah. for example. Yeah. I don't know if we should bring this up now or not, but I mean, it Go actually might have been the Black Mirror thing. Um, oh. It, it, was, it was very much the, the idea of sort of torturing them in this mission, like, here's what we can During do power. to you. Yeah, paralysis. Yeah. So now we're talking about the season four premiere of Black Mirror. Yes, I'm Netflix. sorry. Yes. Uh, episode yeah. four, or season McAllister. four, episode one. Yes. Yeah, USS McAllister. Yeah. Or Callister, that's what it was. Callister, yes. Um, but the idea being that you would paralyze somebody and show you show them what you could do to them and then kind of have like a then sort of co- yeah, cooperative demonstration. Okay, have I got you going? Okay, yeah, you're cooperating fair. now. Let's yeah, go. That's fair. Why go to all this trouble? Let them walk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
But I, it, it, they didn't really demonstrate how they could get up to the ship, did they? Did the show? No. They they actually, he just yeah. popped. Transported. Hmm. Yeah, and the thing I remembered about this was it was kind of another, and I, I feel like this one was more fun, as we talked about, but it's another one with kind of godlike creatures and aliens needing bodies to have it. Yeah. Like, sure. What was the one we just watched with the cubes? Um, the balls. They, they, yeah. Uh, yeah. By the bed, and uh, Spock was yeah. the, the yes. evil one of those three yes. people. Yes, and I know so, what you're yeah. talking about now. And so, yeah, he was... Uh, I don't remember the name of the episode, but I know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, Return to Tomorrow? <laughs> that might have been it. Yeah. Yes, it was Return to Tomorrow. Was the yeah, episode. it was. Okay. Oh, yeah, with uh, my, uh, Diana Muldar. Yeah. yeah. So maybe this one I watched without you guys. Then. That was only like two episodes ago. Yeah. I mean, they said the episode title a couple times, but they it just seemed, <laughs> while I got the point, and I think the metaphor was there. It was a very loose, not I don't know. I didn't see the relevance at all. Kind of, I'm trying to think back to like what, even what would uh so even, well I think so there the, was the, a reference to how they're acting human and they're looking they're human but they're not, not human. human. Yeah, but less human than human. But what does that have to do with this, the Shakespeare quote? By the, I mean, I think that even the context of Shakespeare. So I think they're meaning like. like you're not human, but you're calling yourselves human. I don't mm. know. That's where I was thinking. And why not just? But have I don't a, think it was well developed. Why not just have a rose on that planet? That too, <laughs> instead of like the whatever that honeysuckle or whatever that was. I, yeah, I. Uh, they went to the florist. There were I knew roses that morning. I knew. I could tell Kirk was not a certified nurseryman. I was. I'm a former Ohio certified nurseryman. <laughs> I thought it was coxcomb, is what that <laughs> actually. That what's the, what's the term? Uh, coxcomb is no, 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 the, oh, the certified oh, certified nurseryman. Certified. I was certified from 1988 to 1990. Yeah. yeah so that 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 was a that was also a, a pretty good comic bit too. The idea of like, what do you call this thing? Just a flower. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Right. I, I was sure. I was the same anything. way. I was like, I'm sure he's gonna give the name. Nope. Flowers. <laughs> what do I look like? A certified nurseryman. <laughs> and why did Kirk crush the flower? Like I, he's he was looking so, off the distance, uh, what like it making matter? a point, and yeah. he just crushes it, yeah. and drops it. Yeah. And it's like, what's he trying to communicate? I, well, that's the idea. That's that was the thing of like it was. It seemed to go along with the metaphor he's trying to make. Is by any other name is almost sort of like a whatever doesn't matter kind of like a thing. <laughs> like that kind of by yeah. any other name, like yeah, uh, whatever you call whatever. it, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did they explain where they got these these bodies they're in? No. Because I was yeah. trying to figure that out. Yeah. So the explanation of why they're in human body. Because at yeah. first I was like, oh, why do they look like humans when they come from another right. galaxy? Because hmm. uh, everybody looks like humans on Star Trek. But then the yeah. explanation of, okay, we're going to mirror you so we can steal your ship and we'll right. fit on right. it makes total sense. I actually like that. Yeah. yeah. So, how- but it served the budget and it served the story. Sure. But then at the end of the episode, I really think we should have seen one, kind of like a mm. cat spa where we saw the little yes. creatures yes. at the end. Uh, I think it would have been great if it was when Kirk was seducing right. Kalinda and she turned uh, back into which the... Which I think, I guess Galaxy Quest kind of Mm. So I wrote down Galaxy yeah. Quest because the multiple yeah. tentacles, I mean, they weren't yeah. as sophisticated, oh, but well, it called to mind yeah. Galaxy. And some of the manners, especially when they got drunk. And I really liked the, the idea of them being those creatures. Yeah. And I thought Spock said they had a hundred limbs, each of which could do a different function. Yes. Like oh, I didn't and then that. Kirk yeah. says, I don't know if they can handle the triple lift. I'm like, he just said... They could do a hundred different things at once. We well, said yeah. it, the immense bodies, the immense. Bodies, oh, maybe that. Oh, maybe that's, that's, the idea of all like, right. Uh, now I, I do think that. I do think if this was a universe journey episode, <laughs> she would have turned into the tentacle monster, and yes. Kyle K would have slept with her anyway. Oh yeah. yes, this yeah. is just saying. <laughs> well, Not an alternate episode, but that that went through my mind that I would like to see Kake sleep with the tentacle. Well, and I, I like that talk and the talk about in case shelled. I thought it was one of the better it, instead of Kirk and Spock and the other guys saying. Oh, here's what it must be like to be an alien in a body. We they let the alien actually talk about this is really weird being yeah. in this different body, this nice. case shell. Yeah. But then, I thought that was a good. I thought that was a nice. But then why at the end when they're gonna sell them on a planet? Are they saying, well, you're gonna have to stay as humans? Like I, when you sell on the planet, can't you turn back? Or hmm. was it a permit? No, it couldn't have been a permit. No, I don't think they. Yeah. I don't think they said anything about. Uh, Staying or not, it was just sort of like we well, got a perfectly good home over here. But they made some comment uh, that well, but, made reference that they were going to stay in the human bodies. And did they just get in those bodies because they had to have, right? Because otherwise they would have kind of figured out how to be human, right? But all right, so there were a couple of things. One, Spock said that, that they were almost perfectly human or too perfectly human. Hmm. So it, it's more human than yeah, human. I don't think yeah. it was like a, an illusion. I think they really did somehow assimilate their bodies into this yeah. thing. And the other thing was that uh, Kalinda, when when Kirk was first trying to seduce her, even, even she even used the word seduce. 
And said, oh, very and, Mrs. Robinson. And, and said that she had <laughs> been studying them, studying their literature. Yeah. Studying, I'm not uh, sure yeah. how they were doing that. And also, they must have done that before they got down to the surface. So it's like they were profiling them to hail them down there to do this thing. Like, we want your ship, so we know yeah. we, have, we, need, we need these bodies to run it and be in it. Yeah. So. And they were really big creatures. Uh, they apparently talk about the Kelvins in an episode of Deep Space Nine. Oh, yeah. And they mention that they're twice the size of an adult Klingon male. Right. In their wow. natural okay. form. Yeah, so being in the turbo lift would be too big for them. In that makes yeah. sense. That yeah. makes sense. I would have loved, I still am curious about how they found the bodies. Cause right. How did they do it? Kalinda's and, is like, I'll take that one. Good choice. Right. Well, I mean, yeah, did they study someone and, and, and just, like, make one? They and apparently, somebody? gender, two genders are a universal concept. Yeah. We know this. We know yeah. this yeah. from yeah. Uh, whatever episode that was. Well, so, I mean, so that, that brings up a, it's another good, I think, segue to one of your segments here. Because of they, they became human, mm-hmm. made these devices somehow... For use with a human body, right? And their outfits. So mm-hmm. I think it would be yeah. like a fashion. Oh, fashion. Yeah. Fashion. Jesus. So one of the first things that I noticed was that somehow the women had evolved beyond the need for uniforms with backs on them. <laughs> Wait, yes. they didn't have backs on them? I didn't notice. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, I'm just kidding. That's all I can look at in the first scene. I'm glad the ladies weren't here for this episode because three thumbs up is all I can say for the fashion. I have full, this episode. full jumpsuits for the men. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. of course, and completely backless. Yeah. like yeah. from the back, it looked like they were topless. I will say yeah. I appreciated how which I liked. Really, the do-it-all person for the Kelvins was the the woman on, on the, the bridge. Oh, the Helms, yeah. Yeah, who Drea? Yeah, yeah Drea. That was yeah. It. yeah. Didn't even need Chekhov or anybody else. She yeah. was she was really running things. She was. She was started engineering. She did bridge. She seemed to be able to handle the human body. Yeah. My my note about that. that like, oh, I'm later, sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Well, later on, it was just, yeah. it was kind of jumping ahead of it, but it just I loved her reaction to when uh, Ro, uh, Rojan just started throwing a fit. Like she she wasn't a part of any of this. Uh, She's been on the bridge the whole time. They've been. Being you know being toyed with off yeah. off the bridge, yeah. and she just looks. I'm like, what what the hell is going on? I, I, I mean, this is a different alternate episode. Why wasn't she just like, no, we're not going back. It's not bothering me. <laughs> yeah, you're the idiot. I'm single. <laughs> I don't have these problems. I was looking up the Deep Space Nine reference, just curious because I was like, oh, did they ever talk about them again? Mm-hmm. And apparently, it was just Worf was talking about having difficulty getting a child to sleep, and said, I don't know why I can't get the child to sleep. I find oh. a Kelvin twice my size. Oh, wow. oh, so apparently, at some point, the Klingons fight them. Huh. Hmm. Which I'm curious if. Well, I mean, if Worf was in it, it had to be after this point. Right. And you wouldn't think there'd be Kelvin any more Kelvins coming. Right. So apparently they don't settle so peacefully. Klingons get into battle with them at some point. Mm. But they don't go any further down to that. Well, I mean, Klingons wouldn't battling anybody for... I mean, right. it That's could true. have been just some kind of... I don't know. I'm just... I find that interesting. I had one more fashion note other sorry. than... Yeah, sorry. The ladies looking great. Uh, yeah, they did. They Linda. Even, they even like... Dreo was even wearing the gold, like Chekhov. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even and the, she, she was so backless. Yeah. You know? Oh, backless. Kirk was wearing like a crop top or something. So mm. when he's fighting uh, uh, Rojan at the end, like his uniform keeps rising up, but he's wearing some kind of black undershirt. I didn't catch Unlike that. Unlike other episodes where he'd have been like, check it out, check out my s- stomach. So we can tell this is late in the season. Because <laughs> he was having to wear his girdle. Uh-huh, yeah. Because <laughs> I thought, man, he looks a little weird. And then in that fight, yeah, it rode up. And so, yeah, it was like halfway up and he's still covered. So it was just nothing but black all the way down. Right. So Not knocking you, Shatner. I understand. Back to the sexism briefly. Sure. <laughs> I, thought <laughs> it was, I thought it was interesting that in the ending credits of this episode, instead of crediting Majel Barrett as Chapel, it's mm-hmm. a Majel Barrett as Christine. Yeah. Which seems off to me. Huh. I thought. I mean, everybody else is always credited by last name, and she usually is. Along those lines, McCoy, like, I feel like in every episode where he interacts with her, he's barking at her. Mm. Yeah. Although, yeah. just get it, nurse. Tonight was part of the, in, or in this episode was part of the, yeah. them trying to act like Spock was dying or whatever. Right. And she was a little slow to catch up. I wonder is there must be a, a set of classes at the academy that are kind of like Second City. Or improv Olympic, where you learn to act and improv and do shenanigans just in case you have to do the kind of shenanigans and improv they. I mean, I feel like that would be a valuable do. thing for starship I, officers. I think to it do. would be. I, I yeah. think, and maybe this is a good thing for uh, our current armed services. <laughs> um, I think uh, not armed services, but did it like FBI agents or CIA agents who were going undercover have to take some of that? Some I cops that work undercover, yeah, I think, I take think some of those so. classes. Yeah. You don't almost have to. 
also along those lines, um, we talked about this uh, while we were watching the show, but Bach and Scotty are messing with the device that the mm. Kelvins have installed to take over the ship. And in the background, Kirk is talking to Honan or whatever. Just Kirk, keeping him distracted. Just talking. And I just just like, what is he talking about? Because <laughs> he just stays up uh, at yeah. the upper level and he's he's gesturing and it's like, what what act is he? What that was a very interesting background It was scene. weird. Yeah, I, I, I didn't notice until the end. I didn't realize what was happening because I, yeah. I can only see uh, just Kirk. So yeah. I, I thought it was just a random crewman up there, right. like like he was. His arms were out just like just enough to where it looked like he was sort of frozen, except his arms kept or his hands kept kind of moving oh, the, a little the, bit. The, the Kelvin, so I thought that yeah. The Kelvin almost turned to look at Scotty and Spock and Kirk right. was distracting uh, him. Yeah. I like that it was so subtle that it was there, yeah. but it wasn't yeah. like Me too. you didn't hear them have a conversation about it. Me it too. just happened, which was cool. And then Kirk obviously like came out the door and met them right in the hallway. Of course. So it was very cohesive in that way. Mm. I liked it. I liked it a lot. I did. Back to the type of creatures these Kelvins were, which mm. I like that they use the term Kelvin, kind of like uh, the Star Trek 2009 movie. I don't know if that oh, was a yeah, reference or right. not, but that's right. Um, anyway, and then, by the way, they don't cooperate. They invade. No, what it was he <laughs> said. Conquer. They that's conquer. Right. That was one of the things I was gonna. I, I forgot about that because we we're talking about them fighting with the Klingons at some yeah. point. That that would explain like if, if there was yeah. some sort of encounter, yeah. they probably yeah. would have been like all puffing up their chests either way. Yeah. So these Kelvin got more human, human because yeah. they were in the human, those human bodies. Right. They must have got out at some point. They, I would, or others um, came or the from other somewhere. Yeah. But I thought it was interesting that their species is supposedly really advanced. They've got all this great technology. Yes. They can't build a starship to get home, first of all, which right. is weird. Even though they've got the hundred arms that can all... Right. Or those them. devices. How, how but, do they make those right, devices? Right. They and can't make this... the right. one thing that seemed really uh, <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. for their species to me was that they talked about the commander was like, well, my descendant's going to be the commander. And I'm like, so you're this advanced society, but you decide who rules by heredity? heredity? Mm. You don't do by skill? That, to me, doesn't make sense. And the what? fact that Rojan was even as decent a commander as he was, if he was just the 300-year descendant... You'd think you get some bad apples here and there. And did more than five of them come? I mean, initially, and they lost a bunch of them, or was it? Just I think there were a few more than five. I think yeah. we just didn't see them. But I, I think they realized that, that the electoral college didn't work, so that's why they went to heredity. They they, they circled back. Oh, they, they, they oh God! Keith, Keith. <laughs> I just thought that was an <laughs> odd thing for an advanced society. <laughs> what does oh. God do with the starship? Exactly. Yeah. Star Trek Five. The best Star Trek movie, not God needs no. That's five that because that's when they meet God at the center of the. Galaxy. I thought I thought it was Search for Spock when they when he was being kept on that Mm-mm. planet in the. No, was God with the, with the starship is when God tries to take over the starship in Star Trek Five, hmm. and Kirk asks him, "What does God need with the starship?" Remember, all right. So down on the planet, yeah, uh, uh, there's this being trying to hitch a ride back. And Star Trek Three, yeah, there's a Klingon. There's it's well, Kirk, I guess it's Spock, we'll Savick, and a Klingon in Star Trek Three on the planet. Hmm. You're thinking Star Trek Five. That's I'm, weird. I right? promise you. Uh, I've seen the movies like 20 times each, <laughs> at least. The films I know very well. Hmm. Uh, really? Spock somehow did a mind touch oh, yes. through a large amount of rock. I had a question about that. Yeah. Uh, they, they they implied that this was some sort of plan they'd done before. Did they do this another an episode? They like through a door at some but point. I thought but I don't know if they were specifically referencing that episode though. I couldn't tell. No, yeah. I don't know. It seemed like it was some other. But yeah, I, I like the idea that he just got all these different things that he was able to catch. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, that he threw out. You know, blah, 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 and then was able to. They kind of started to come back together later. I thought that. I thought that, again. That was an interesting concept. Yeah. Um, rather than him just saying, "Here's the deal," blah 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 blah. blah. It's like, oh, uh, I don't really have it yet. Continue the episode. I like that Kirk finally learned some things about Vulcans. <laughs> he explains. <laughs> Let's <Lesson>, fuck. <laughs> Lesson, yeah. The beginning of this, this Let season. Let me Kirk explain to you. The beginning, I, me yes. too. I love the term Kirk explain. The beginning of the season, he didn't know anything about Vulcans. He didn't know what Colin <laughs> Farr was, any of that stuff. Mm. Now he's like, don't you guys put yourself in a catatonic state? Yeah, it's going to take a minute. It literally took him five uh, seconds. Well, man. what we didn't see was he made Sarah get a drink with him. And they exactly. had then, a whole okay. big conversation. All right. All right. In Journey to Babel. I mean, I think I complained in the mock time. that like, why do these guys get to know each other? Mm. How does McCoy not know this stuff? You know, so apparently, you know, they uh, did. Yeah. Speaking of drinks. I've, just oh, got, I've got so many uh, things about here. About, uh, well, well, about the plans in general. All right, so... First of all, I mean, I think we kind of touched on this, but I'm having, I'm still, I'm having, having, a, having trouble suspending my disbelief about the idea that they couldn't somehow overpower these people. If they, they have these arms and they keep like touching mm-hmm. these belt I mean, there were so many times when they had them in a relaxed position where they probably could have just like right. headlock right. anything just uh, to stop them from doing this. Their That's yeah, what I something for. that too. All right, uh, but anyway, so they they came up with these these convoluted plans instead. Which one, was one, so much more fun. It, was, it was a lot of fun. I, I will admit it was a lot of fun. 
It seemed like it took a lot of alcohol for Scotty and uh, whoever the so, other. So yeah, why was he a lightweight if he never drank before? That too. Yeah. So right. All kinds of things. I'm trying to cut the other way from him. With everyone else, like I don't know how to use this human body. He, with him, it was like, eh, I'm a Kelvin, so it's not affecting he, me. He, well, he's sitting, sitting, sitting yeah. which <laughs> makes it slower. Sure. And you know, he's got a couple hollow limbs, hollow That's tentacles. The yeah, yeah. 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 Too. <laughs> um, I just like the sea shanty music, which it's, was a common Star Trek music they used right. in many episodes. Yes, but I thought the sea shanty music worked particularly well in this instance. I mm. remember as a kid that particularly being one of my favorite scenes. And they kept bringing like back the, the they'd restart the sea shanty music every yeah. time they came uh -huh. back to Scotty. Mm. But this whole plan, like as Spock's playing chess with Rohit, Jan, mm -hmm. and Kirk's mm -hmm. seducing, it feels like for the rest of the crew it's taking place over days or weeks, mm -hmm. whereas Scotty's just been in the bar the entire time. <laughs> yeah. So I think it was supposed Completely to be one possible. day. Yeah. I think it was supposed to be one full day because McCoy gave oh, the alien three hour. shots. <laughs> no, McCoy oh, gave the right. alien three shots right. from the beginning to the end of the drinking So it wasn't... Uh... So it was a full day. But hmm. they were drinking, at I least. Think. But it just, I, the time did not make sense. Scotty drinking, yeah, yeah. lining up with everything else that was going on. So I, I, it was it was kind of fun that they waited to, up till the end to, you know, the secret weapon was a scotch. Mm. It was a great way to put that over. But Which yep. was frustrating, because yeah. if you have a really cold, really good scotch, you drink it when you're sober, not when you're right. already yeah. trashed. Well, if you don't want, yeah, what a waste. I guess maybe he was holding it back, because he, he really didn't want to part with it, but he was so drunk he could, didn't care at that point to do it. <laughs> yeah, but my, right. my thought was... He should have just like skipped right to Four Loco at the beginning. Ah, it would have ah, taken care of everything. Four Loco was banned. <laughs> yeah, I said the galaxy. My yeah. other no, no, but yeah, in the, in the future it will have been completely banned. So yeah, absolutely. As was Space Four Loco. <laughs> space. And of course, they had the space dust on the, on the Scotch whiskey bottle. Of course, bottle. yeah. It was Scotch brand Scotch whiskey, just Scotch whiskey. <laughs> Scotch whiskey. Front. It was a very yeah. generic brand. Yeah. It was in a plastic bottle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh god, that it would have eaten through the plastic bottle. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, uh, but I, it was it was more fun for them to try to come up with their individual plan. Awesome. But my thought, of course, was uh, the other the other whole of that was why did McCoy just like poison him with whatever or knock him out with right. like, he's, he's injecting him with, oh, with right. whatever? What do they you call seem it? to have Corazine. some yeah. ability to not read their minds necessarily, but kind of it, know. That's what it felt mm. like early on, and then it's and then like once they, they distracted the human emotions, like distracted them from, from doing their it. powers. They had to concentrate. But I think if he had tried to poison them, it would have been too obvious a ploy they would have got on. And I think the same thing. If they nerve pinch one of them, sure. if they nerve pinch one of them, the other ones would have no. noticed something was wrong. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It, it, it just seemed like a shame that this was the time you heard I got turned into a block and couldn't seduce yeah. Rohan or yeah. whatever. I feel it's. Uh, I feel. Uh, I guess maybe a little bit relieved that they didn't make her do that. I guess but better than it was Kirk. Yeah. Actually, the original script probably had her doing it, and Shatner's like, no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is my scene. Just like when he came out of paralysis, just like, no, it's okay. I got this. Uh, when Kirk does try to seduce Kalinda the first time, and she's like, I don't understand what you're doing, and that's is this great what's too. called seduction? That was that's essentially my physical encounter with most women. <laughs> it pretty much goes that way. What are you doing? Is this seducing? I don't understand. <laughs> Do you apologize with your lips, too? Uh, no. That uh, yes, but just by talking. <laughs> That that was fun. I mean, that was it, that was. Was, it was it was it was awful in some ways, but at the same time, I really I did well, enjoy it. Well, then you trying to seduce me? I just want to the you know, are you trying to seduce me, Mister Kirk? Yeah, uh, Mrs. Yeah. Robinson. I just love that. It, yeah. Again, it, at first it didn't work. Yeah. Eventually, it did work for him, of course. But yes. And I it like was that. very. It, it, it's not like it was rapey at all, because he was just like pulling out the offer. She was all over. Like, apologize to me again, Captain. Yes. This is one time where Kirk seducing a woman actually. Did make sense for to save the ship, or yeah, and it worked really it well. Yeah. One a few times. I would, <laughs> I would have liked it if when Rojan by the time he got down there, she and Kirk were in full on intercourse, and it's uh, just like because she's like, yeah, okay, oh, what? Is, how does this work? That's awesome. This is amazing. Yeah. What is that penis? Yeah. <laughs> how does that work? What What is that strange substance yeah. coming out of it? Oh Jesus! Uh, I like that. <laughs> So I like, made, they could it would have been hard to get a stunt man, but yeah. <laughs> I like Kirk saying I'm stimulating him about Rohan. That was very. Which funny. there's got to be some slash fiction out there. That he also <laughs> seduced the man. That was that very was. funny. One of the things I thought was interesting too. Uh, one of the things I noted was that uh, Spock made a better wingman than McCoy somehow. Yes. For, for noticing we what he got to, and yeah, yeah, no, let's, yeah, you know, I need a shot. Come on, elbow, <laughs> elbow. 
And then also just uh, like playing chess with Rojan and is like playing it up like, oh, you know, yeah. by the way, I just, oh, that's where they were. And then, do you wish that the shot would have been Corbomite? Do you need a Corbomite shot spot? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, yeah, the, for the for the wink wink, yeah. yeah. When they were fighting later and they smashed the, the, the game, was it 3D chess or it looked like 3D checkers? They were playing 3D chess at some point. I didn't pay attention to the smash. Because then it was all red and black little pieces. Maybe there was 3D checkers. Smashing? I, I thought that happened on the he, bridge. He throws he... them across the table during the Oh, that. that. Okay, that okay. Fight. Yeah. That was, right. So well, how did the Kelvins reproduce? Because they mm. really seem to have no clue about romance at all. That's a Yeah, that's a good question. I well, and see, you're going to be out there. like They tried to act like it was very professionalism. We're not going to hit mm -hmm. on one another. But... This is a multi generational crew, so you have to right. have sex with one another. Yeah. Right. Well, she she just said, but like in that first team when they, uh, yeah. she was talking about seduction, I've, I've been studying this. I don't understand why humans have this preoccupation with this process. Why isn't so this it was is very just bi biological? Yeah. Just, yeah, they just yeah. like went in the chamber once every year and on his birthday. And <laughs> well, did every, it every seven out. years. I gotta say, whatever <laughs> Clinda was studying, her. Her hair and her outfit and everything. Oh my god! She, that was pretty. Cute. That's that's a very good point. Like, why did she look that good if she didn't right. know why? Right. She's, I mean, she's, she's just looked like she's studious. She looked like Sansa Stark to me. She didn't talk mm. like Sansa Stark, but I thought she looked like Sansa Stark with tons of pointy mascara on the eyelashes and everything. Sure. Like, why would? Come on, <laughs> that's just an accident, I guess. <laughs> I did also appreciate that Kalinda liked older men. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we don't know how old she was. Well, I, yeah, I, just from the, well, I, sorry, she's like the shells of older men. Because <laughs> I, I don't know, I, I, She's like, I'm staying with you. Warren really Stevens, I, well, good I guess actor, so. but he, I Warren think he's Stevens at least, to play he I'm going to say he's got to be 20 years older than her. Um, let's I, see, I, I Barbara, there's anything wrong with Barbara Boucher yeah. played Belinda, or Kalinda, she was born in 1943. Warren Stevens, who played Rohan, if IMDb would load here, was born 1919. All right. So oh, 24 wow. years. Yeah. He didn't look that old to me, yeah. I guess. I don't know. It didn't really register. Maybe they had it was a lot of maybe makeup. Well, Warren Stevens is uh, best known for the movie Forbidden Planet. That's the other thing I thought when, when I first saw this. Was I had seen Contessa. Forbidden Planet around the same time I first oh, saw this. So I'm like, that's the guy that. from that other movie. I just know Forbidden it's Planet as that movie mentioned in the Rocky Horror song. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also based on The Tempest. Ah. Yeah. It's uh, it's a good movie. Leslie Nielsen's in it too, playing totally serious. Yeah. I guess I most of his stuff was serious, wasn't it? I guess in, except for uh, Forbidden Planet, other than Robbie the Robot. Yeah. Well, Naked Gun, right? And, oh, uh, Leslie Nielsen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. but oh yeah, the, we're <laughs> wires crossed there. Yeah. And whatever, what was the uh, series that that was based on? I, don't, I don't, never actually saw it. Oh, uh, Police Squad. Hmm. So Barbara Boucher, who played Kalinda, yeah. is still an active actress. She's got a couple credits from 2017. She's got hmm. one coming up from 2018. So she's still around. Was she, she's best she, known for Gangs of New York in 2000. Who, who did she oh, play right. in, in the episode? Uh, Kalinda. That's oh. Kalinda, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She was in the original Casino Royale as Money Penny. That's right. Hmm. So she's she's she like a Money she's Penny. She's got a... Uh, Julie Cobb played Yeoman Thomas. Thompson. 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 Um, she's best known for this role. But she was in some growing pains in Charles in Charge. And wow. <laughs> Leslie Dalton played Drea. She's only got 11 credits. She's also best known for this role. And this was her first role. She only did a few other mm. parts after that. A huh. uh, lot of guest stars in this episode. And I thought the guest stars got a decent story. They weren't mm -hmm. just set dressing. Like, they had, there were like five of them with personalities. Yeah. Uh, there was also Tomar, played by Robert Fortier, and Haynar, mm. played by Stuart Moss. Well, so. I think Hainar, one of them was in another episode, or it's going to be in another episode. Um, so, I'm opening up theirs right now. Robert Fortier, who was in the movie Popeye in 1980. Huh. Um, I saw them in the theater. Wow. 1980. Yeah. yeah. Man, I can't believe, I must, wow. Hey, wow, you're old. I wasn't born in 1980. It was probably you and three other people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would, I would have been like six well. years old. Yeah. Like, how would I even do this? <laughs> Interesting. Uh, so, yeah, Robert Forty I played Tomar was only in this episode. So, Stuart Moss, um, who, beyond, besides Star Trek, played fully in Beyond Westworld, the sequel. Um, he also did eight episodes of Hope Heroes. Oh, yeah. And uh, Star Trek wise, he is in The Naked Time as Tormelon. So we did oh, see okay. him oh, that's right. yeah. at some point. He's the guy who takes off his glove at the beginning, I think. Oh, is he? Is I don't awesome? remember. But yeah, I just I liked that there were all those guest stars that they had meaningful roles, even though that meant not much for you, her, and Chekhov to do. That's why they were made into cubes. Uh, something about the uh, the the interplay with the, like the main three people for a while, or main three Kelvins, yeah. reminded me of like Zod 
from, uh, from yeah, uh, Superman. Like, actually, like, and the, the, uh, when they were uh, Galaxy Quest yeah. aliens and being awkward. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the, 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 uh, something yeah. about the outfits and the, the, you know, the triumvirate oh, of it. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, Zod, Nursa, and Nana. Yeah. Yeah. Similar yeah. jumpsuits. Mm -hmm. um, this was written by Jerome Bixby, who wrote uh, Mirror Mirror. Mm. And oh, then two yeah. other episodes that we haven't seen yet. His my alternate episode is his one of his his original uh, version that he wrote mm -hmm. was a lot darker. Mm -hmm. So that's why they had DC Fontana lighten it up. Lighten it up. So See, DC Fontana usually um, doesn't write the best stories. His, I think but. his mm -hmm. original script, the Kelvins were called the Divinions. The they Divinions. executed ten Enterprise crew members by opening the shell bay doors and letting them get sucked out into space. Wow. It's a little bit darker, isn't it? Kirk was put through hellish torture, quote unquote, hmm. and crew members were chosen to mate with each other. Kirk was paired with the AM and Leslie Thompson. That episode I want to see yeah. for all of those. That things. is interesting. Oh, they were put together to mate to eventually breed slaves to the Kelvins. I was wondering. So, that was going to be my follow-up question. Like, why would they have? You know, well, I guess. Uh, NBC objected. I, I think I like this episode better. NBC <laughs> objected to all these. <laughs> And they also, uh, the production staff also thought the mating aspect was too similar to the cage, which, mm. yeah, yeah, it's fair. But. I, I think this was fun like Mirror Mirror. I think it kept that tone. Yeah, if, it, they, if they went this way, it would not be a lightweight episode. It would be, as much, it'd yeah. be a serious one. Dodeca Hedron, yeah. they were trying to figure out a way to eliminate the crew because they didn't know how mm -hmm. Roddenberry had one a Mexican onyx dodecahedron in his, mm. on his desk. Uh, so DC Fontana... So, so, so they were six more of these. She had given it to them, and they were like, "Yeah, we should just." Roddenberry made the suggestion that they be transformed into objects of that shape. So they were they were ten sided dice. Yeah. I don't, I don't know why they wouldn't have just disintegrated them or whatever or vaporized them. Yeah, why keep them alive? Or I mean, why? Yeah, why? Or why bother with the, the intermediary step of having them in these cubes or? Oh. God, I, just, right. I just even misused the term. Right. Do take a hedron, hedrons. Yeah. That. Would, yeah, that's a good question. Or just. Frozen them all and made them stay wherever they were on the on the ship and just. I was just yeah. annoyed that they didn't pick them up off the floor. First of all, they just left them scattered in the hallway. <laughs> and I was also annoyed that we didn't hear the pad fall. Like the three of them on the bridge, one was holding right. a pad, and then the pad was sitting oh, on the floor next to him. And we didn't hear funny. it. And then in the hallway, there were several pads scattered among them. And like surely one of them, the pad dropped on the decahedron and smashed it. <laughs> Uh, they're just that they, delicate, that, you know, the devices that... that, well, that I was going to say, they pushed the button that said, don't let any of these cubes get crushed by anything they're holding. <laughs> okay. yes. They're advanced. Very advanced. Right. They're very, One of their very, very hundred advanced. Arms in it. <laughs> yep. um, there was a weird uh, captain's log entry in this, oh. where they're heading towards the barrier, and Kirk's like, they've worked up a suicide method for me when he had no chance to slow oh, right. and record it. <laughs> and I was like, where is this log entry coming from? It was very much present tense, so it's not like he made it later and yeah, inserted it that in. Is weird. Oh, that's right. I, I, I and I went straight really from, from telling that. him the plan to door opens him on the bridge, and now I'm making this voiceover. Well, and hmm. I love like that. <laughs> Makes no sense. Have they ever done that device? I mean, I guess yeah. the device has always been a log. It's so when they come back from commercial to catch you. Well, yeah. well, yes, but I mean, uh, it's always, it's, but it's always framed as being a log of some sort, yeah. right? Like, so yeah. even when McCoy says something, it's like, no. Uh, well, yeah, but they, they, they just say it doesn't make sense before to use as a commercial recap. Or they mm -hmm. say it's supplementary or something yeah. to yeah. give the indication yeah. it was recorded later. But ah, okay. I, I like that they had the plan and everything. They're doing everything, and then Scotty just has his finger poised over the button the whole time. Oh. Who, he, Scotty apparently did not do well in the acting no. improv classes. No, I, I, I put Scotty had to wait until he sees the silver of their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll come back to that for just a second, but I like that Rohan under, immediately was like, yeah, we knew what you guys were doing. We oh, knew yeah. what you were playing. Yeah. We weren't going to let yeah. him cross the out anyway. <laughs> Um, yeah, the silver in the eyes. We we're gonna blow you up. So what? I knew you were. No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. I, I knew the whole time. You didn't know. Yeah, I did. I knew. See, I thought it was more. They had their finger on the button on the belt, ready to free Scotty if he made a move. But, but I like that your explanation as well. Um, the silver in the eyes. Yeah, we went back to the barrier where we went in where no man has gone yeah. before, and Gary Mitchell. And Elizabeth Denner got turned into silver-eyed god beings. That's right. And this time, that's it was very uneventful. Nobody got turned into god beings. Which yeah. I think would have been a really cool callback if that's how they defeated them. That, like, Spock turns around yeah, and yeah, yeah. silver and yeah. he kills them. <laughs> That I don't remember cool. there being a barrier for that whole thing, so... That's yeah. how they got infected. They tried to cross the galactic barrier at the end of our galaxy. Yeah. Which so makes that's what no that sense was? in Starbase yeah. so, maps, because Earth's not near the end. It would have taken them decades to get to it, but anyway. Right, I, I, I must have missed a few... This, is, this raises so many questions. Okay, so... <laughs> So a galactic barrier or something has been established in this, this whole It's at the edge of the galaxy yeah. to keep them from leaving it. What? Yeah, the whole galaxy is <laughs> surrounded by a barrier. 
that apparently looks like it's on one plane, like as a little fence, but right. but you can't right. just fly over it or under it. I don't feel like that's come up before. Yeah, I mean, it's well, I mean, come before. Dude. I mean, like, and like the rest of like this, I, all the other series are like them. This seems this seems like something that would come up a lot. I want to say, about, and like, I could uh, be wrong, that in Star Trek Five, I know in Star Trek Five they go to the center of the galaxy, mm-hmm. and there's another barrier. But I want to say they make reference to like, hey, this barrier is like the one at the edge of the galaxy. But I could be wrong about that. I feel like we may have another episode coming up, and I, and maybe I'm just thinking, it maybe thinking of a couple of novels where they go beyond the barrier. the barrier. But it's always put in the stark terms that oh, that once you bust through, it's going to take you forever to get back. Yeah. Somehow they always make it back. The Q squared uh, novel, which is the one that reveals True Lane to be a Q, and it gets very convoluted. Hmm. I believe they deal with the galactic barrier and what creatures live within it and stuff too. That it was a Q that uh, possessed Gary Mitchell and Elizabeth Detter. So, oh. so the purpose, so the purpose of that that Gary Mitchell thing in the beginning of the series was to establish that there was this barrier. I don't think that, that was the purpose. Really? I think it was just a random story, hmm. and they're like, "How do we make him turn into a god? We'll come up with this random oh my device." God, no, that... yes. That should be like no. Star Trek did have that kind of continuity. Hmm. I I like the weird no hanging on it's gone before, where it's just he gets they get zapped and they take that these powers and yeah, rather than it being somebody taking yeah. them over. Yeah, it was a novel. It wasn't canon. That, it was dude, a really beat me too. Good I was gonna say I'm not counting that, that as canon. Really it was cool. a really good novel. Yeah. That sounds the sort of thing like I would, one of the best Star Trek novels. Yeah, that would love to do though. Yeah, I mean yeah. if you're gonna do, if you're gonna write something like that, go ahead, go back and like. Put some, put some of these things movie. together. And Peter make, David make, is make probably the, mix, the best you know. Star Trek author wrote that. Hmm. Yeah. It's, it's very interesting. Definitely worth reading. It's next-gen novel primarily. I got a few random notes. Uh, they were first coming up with their plan when Tomar was sitting there eating his vegetables, <laughs> like right behind him, and they weren't even trying to be all that quiet. <laughs> oh, when they gave him the... Okay, right. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 I said like, it looked like Play-Doh. Yeah. They all had like just the random like... <laughs> I still never understand the food processor either. Mm. <laughs> I, I mean, it... It must be as advanced as those the buttons. Replicator. The one, yeah, the replicator. Because McCoy's like, yeah, McCoy's like, oh, let me show you how it works. All you did was stick the card in there yeah. and hit another button. Oh, thanks. The card has their order on it. Oh, is that, just oh, have the that's usual. Right. So that, that's one of, the, uh, one of the things I asked about that. Can it can make alcohol, right? I mean, so why was... Uh, I don't think the replicator can make alcohol. Oh, in wonder. next gen, it makes synthol. Synthol. Oh, which is the fake alcohol? Well, not fake alcohol, but it's the alcohol that if you decide you don't want to be drunk anymore, you're instantly sober. The what? But in the original oh series, God. they don't have that. Yeah, next gen That's amazing. forward, they have that. So you can get drunk at night, but then if the ship goes to red alert, you can immediately go. Sober. That's incredible! Oh my God, did that ever come? Like they were actually saying that. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's canon, but it's not huh. until next gen. So yeah, so Scotty had the device of like I have to go find more bottles of stuff and. Uh, in the original series, I'm pretty sure they made a point that liquor <sighs> was something they had to bring with them. Interesting. Yeah, the replicator is like a gift card. Those gift cards where it's like, oh, can I use for alcohol? Excludes it's, tips yeah. and alcohol. Yeah, yeah. They still have to tip mm. the chef. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> um, I, I loved the line where the drunk alien asks Scotty, what is this? And Scotty goes, it's green. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> Couldn't tell from the, like, uh, it was so, so dense within the bottle itself. It just looked like a black liquid until he poured yeah. it. Yeah, and then you can see. I think I, I like the line where they called McCoy on is like, we'll just do this. And I see no reason why you refer to yourself in the, the plot. Yes. No, <laughs> like, I know it really had no plot point, no. but I liked that somebody called him on it. Yeah. It was funny. Yeah. I only have two more random notes. I, uh, the opening shot looked redone, looked nice. It had yeah. the, the moon or planet in the background. And going back to Scott's catatonic thing, or Scott Spock's mm-hmm. catatonic thing, mm-hmm. I doubt this is a reference, but in the Jerry Lewis movie, Cracking Up, he says he can put himself in a catatonic state. Yeah. It's much funnier and it takes a lot longer. I would recommend at least watching that. Me and my brother used to have it memorized. My note on the catatonic state is why didn't Spock lay down? Why do you have to do the trust fall? Right, right. I Vul- mean, it's Vulcans not are just, logical just, to do Just it. that impulse of it. That's what, the way they always do it. Or maybe, Spock's like, like, or maybe Spock's <laughs> like, I don't need to spend the energy. They're going to catch me. That's the logical thing. <laughs> Trust fall. Well, they're, they're so resilient they don't they can just fall and it doesn't hurt them. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I love when they get back to sick bay. McCoy is shaking his head with his just his eyes to let Spock know it's not time to wake up yet. <laughs> Could they have just nerve pinched him? Yeah, sure. Or no, Spock the, the would have nerve, or... yeah. nerve pinched McCoy. Yeah. Oh. And they were like, oh, McCoy's really sick. Yeah. Oh. I'm the doctor. No, no, mm. they knew. They knew he was the doctor. They knew their functions. That's so, right. Yeah. Also, it was odd to me when they were traveling towards the other galaxy. Mm-hmm. First of all, I think it was okay that it looked like it was close because we know that galaxy is so big right. it was perspective right. messed up. 
but there was not a single other star galaxy on the screen. Right. It was all just that other right. galaxy. Mm. And I get that they left the Milky Way, but you'd see other galaxies. Right. Yeah, they could have fixed that. Yeah, I feel like that was a new shot. The next and they remastered. didn't bother. Yeah, it definitely looked better than. But they didn't think like, oh, there should be yeah, other galaxies yeah. in front. Yeah. How they even work in mean, for perspective, like being able to see a distant galaxy from wherever they were, and shouldn't there be? A, I mean, you can what, see a distant galaxy through a telescope. So if you're heading right at the galaxy, it makes sense to me you can see the galaxy. Mm-hmm. And the Enterprise looked like it was almost there, but. The galaxy's so big, I get the force perspective that it really would have taken a lot longer to get there. Well, I mean, you're talking about the, like the, that shot where they have like they're going toward that big mm, like yeah. Milky Way yeah. looking disc. Yeah. Yes. But why would you ever really be between? I don't know how that. I mean, I mean, the spacing of things. They're heading towards that. I guess I'm trying to. I guess I don't really know how, how and, and, or the way the universe is spaced out, so that you have like a certain amount of space between galaxies there to the point where it looks like you're going between nothing. Right. No, so there are big, and then, there are big hmm. patches of nothing between them, but you'd still be able to see your frame of vision other galaxies. Uh, right. So that's right. what I that have a problem weird, with that then. shot. I don't know. Yeah. I guess back then maybe they thought there were only a couple dozen galaxies. <laughs> <laughs> like they hadn't explored space enough to realize that any shot you have is going to have many galaxies. Yeah, yeah. Chronologically, here's so at the beginning. I said before they cold open, they were they were taking the ma- the mannequin challenge. <laughs> for Scott, uh, especially for McCoy, there uh, the thing. The mannequin challenge copied Star Trek. Yeah. I, I still, I'm still kind of on that whole thing about. I feel like they should be able to combat these five people somehow. Yeah. Like even when they're doing the devices, especially when they're doing the thing like, um, we're going to kill you now. Couldn't they've just been like running around like a serpentine right. pattern to get away from whatever they're doing? Since it's direction. That was my thought. Was I should maybe I shouldn't just stand here and wait yeah. for them to neutralize. If they're that desperate, I mean, yeah. yes. Wow, very obedient for that. There was the. I thought it was, again, Spock being the wingman. I love the, mm. the aspect of the plan where he was sort of like saying to, to Rojan, you know, in, in essence, you know, you, you should probably get your woman in check. <laughs> you know, I, I guess maybe he's got a better hold on her than you. Take you know, care kind of, of your woman. Yeah. What was it? Well, yeah, Rojan trying to, uh, going back to his quarters to immediately try to lock it down. Like, hey, are, are, is this an exclusive thing? <laughs> <laughs> that discussion. I like that Kirk, that even advanced... Uh, aliens, and maybe it's because they're in the human body, but Kalinda didn't lock her door either. <laughs> yes. Another staple Walked of the Enterprise. Right it yeah. looked like she People took over his quarters. Maybe that's what it was. E- either it was. way, I mean, it was, and two different doors just like right in and out. Um, yeah, I also think this is the only episode they? we see Scotty's quarters. When do we see Scotty's quarters? That that's where they were drinking. drinking. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's why there was the, the mess there was hall a, or something. There was the bagpipes, and, and that the, makes sense oh, that his yeah. Scotch whiskey Scotch was, was there. there. Yeah. Okay. That's. I'm sorry. That's that. They, yeah, they were in some public area because that's. They started in the public area. Spock then told him to go. Yeah, that's why he's Scotty's. like in and out. And that's yeah. the first time. Yeah. Ready for rankings? Okay, so men, women. This one's hard because we got Thompson, we got Dreo, we got Kalinda. Those three. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who's my current one? Is it Diana? Anne Mulhall from Returns Tomorrow. Yeah. Diana Mulder. Uh, I'm switching to Kalinda. Uh, <laughs> besides the cube scene, that was the other thing that stayed with me forever, believe it or not, was was her. So, yeah. yeah. Kid? She might be my favorite of the women Kirk seduces so <laughs> far. <laughs> I've, I've, I'm still just, I've, I've got my fill of aliens that turn into women <laughs> and into humans, so I, I'm still... Committed. Oh, that's true. Right. That's right. Yes. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, at first glance, I really thought I was going to go with Drea, but she didn't do all that much. Yeah. And I really liked Kalinda as well, so yeah. I think I'm going to also switch to Kalinda. I wanted more Yama Thompson. Plus the Sansa Stark. I like the Sansa Stark thing. I wanted more Yama Thompson, but I also knew she was eh. doomed to be crushed. I, I wasn't going to ever pick Yama Thompson, but Drea yeah. was in the running at least. Well, if, she, if it had been the alternate version where she made it with Kirk, then you then might, have, might, seen, you might have, have seen a little something there. Yeah, I, I think there's an alternate episode there where Drea's like, where the hell is everybody? Why am I here running the ship by myself? I love that. I just like that. And if that scene had happened, I probably would have picked Drea. Yeah. So, ranking. Um, let's start in the middle-ish. Yeah, I think so. Uh, let's start with a piece of the action, The Gangsters of Chicago, which I, is about a little bit above halfway right now. I, this is similar in the sense that it's more of a lighthearted yes. fun episode. Feels like the lightheartedness was was uh, very much an afterthought, though. I mean, it feels yeah. like the uh, for a piece of an action, piece of the action, it was sort of like established pretty quickly yeah. Yeah. what they're going for. And this was it kind of you know you had Kirk at the at the beginning really cr- you know crushed by the crushing of right, Thompson. Right. Yeah. I thought it was going to be really serious, and then yeah. suddenly he just kind of went whoop. But I also uh, liked 
some of the science fiction elements in this mm-hmm. one. Right. Yeah. I think I like this one. I like this one I more. Like this one. Yeah. Yeah. I I think for uh, the reason I'm saying even there it was it was more of a there was yeah. more than just yeah. the light. Yeah. Light Above that is the Changeling. No bad. I like this better, but it could be recency bias. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, that's... Uh, this, this is seems, certainly more fun. I think this was going to be a problem because of the recency bias for this. Yeah. This, yeah. this was just a good time watching it. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, I really but, thoroughly enjoyed watching this episode. I could go above Changeling, which surprises me that it's moving up this high. Um, after that's Metamorphosis with Zephyr Cochran, uh, which is Keith's true love. <laughs> uh, <laughs> however, I, I liked this better than that, too. I would say so. I mean, yeah. there's something a little bit more to it than... Uh, Okay, now we're getting up near the top. So now we're getting into the really good stuff. Uh, yeah. The next one up is I Mud. Oh, I don't think so. This <laughs> and everything above I Mud and up are like the iconic episodes of the season. I Mud, Doomsday Machine, Amok Time, Trouble Tribbles, Mirror Mirror, Journey to Babel. I don't think it should go really higher than that, but that's. I, I, I could go above I Mud for it, but I would have gone above Metamorphosis. See, it's, it's all getting. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. But I mean, honestly, I think. This was a really fun episode, but I think it belongs below the iconic ones. Yeah. So I would probably put it below iMud. That puts it at the top of the list that aren't the iconic ones this season. That's in, that's impressive, <laughs> considering... I mean, I thought it was... There were some things we could nitpick on, but mm-hmm. I thought the story was relatively solid. I liked the concept, and it was fun. Yeah, it's something about the way that... I mean, the things that... Uh, like, the problems, the critical problems with the way that the, like the devices worked and so forth weren't as... I it didn't, didn't make me didn't make me upset. The way the device worked. Mm. I really did it. So are we comfortable with yeah. below I mud and above metamorphosis? I think so. Okay. Yeah, I would not have pegged this as being up this high. Oh yeah. So uh, our Yaman Leslie Thompson, she was married to James Cromwell. Really? Yes. Oh, yeah. interesting. She's the daughter of noted actor Julie Lee J. Cobb. Cobb. Mm-hmm. She was the mother of Star Trek Voyager guest star Rosemary Morgan, mm. who she accompanied the set as Morgan was a minor at the time. And the ex-wife of James James Cromwell, and who, she went to high school with Richard Dreyfuss and Albert Brooks. Oh wow! And was in the theater program with them. Huh? She's more important than I thought. That's yeah. I I, I forgot that I had seen that earlier. I just saw James Cromwell in the Detour the, uh, <laughs> season two mm-hmm. last night. We finally started watching that. But nice. yeah, so I'm sure she prefers Thompson. Uh, <laughs> Keith, by any other name. <laughs> oh. Yeah, oh, I did it to no. Keith. I did it to Keith. <laughs> 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 <laughs>